Good evening everybody and welcome to the video. This is not a lab but I want to cover some of the topics on how we essentially moved 170 gigabyte of data into DynamoDB that is nearly more than 110 million data points. So uh, basically uh, in this video what I want to do is I want to cover different options in which you can bring data into DynamoDB and basically discuss some of the pros and cons. So if you are working uh, on getting uh, large volumes of data into DynamoDB, maybe this might be a good video for you if you're watching. So let's talk about the different methods. Number one, the first method is basically use the managed service that AWS offers, which is uh, you can use import and export into DynamoDB. So you, your data, you have to bring it into S3. If your data is already on S3, you can simply import it into DynamoDB with a few click of button. Now, this works great, but as I said, since it's a managed service, you don't have control on how long will it take to import massive amount of data, right? AWS manages it, right? So again, it would be fast, but you don't have control. If you need a sort of a finer control over the, you know, uh, throughput stuff, right? I think then the next option that I want to discuss is Glue. Now, Glue is a great way. It allows you to connect, uh, you know, from any sources. You can use a JDBC connector, connect from any sources and move large volume of data into DynamoDB. Now, the, the reason where Glue might be useful is if you require an ability to join data and then move into Dynamo, import export won't work, right? Uh, that option uh, probably would not be the best, right? In that case, since you require join, um, I think uh, Glue would be a good choice. And also, for example, you might want to fill in data, you might want to perform certain transformation those scenario glue would be a really really good um, for moving large volume of data again uh, you can use you know um, again in glue whenever you read data it's in the spark then you can you know apply transformations very easily right you could do all of that um, uh, on glue the third method that i want to discuss is um, again now what you can do is you can um, Basically, so the way we did it, basically, we were publishing all these massive amount of data into an SQSQ. So now what you can do is you can add a Lambda as a trigger, right? A consumer is a Lambda function. Now the Lambda will basically consume batch of records from the SQSQ. You can decide upon the batch size. You can use a layer called PinamoDB on a Lambda function. Now, what you want to do is you want to see how long it takes for one batch. You want to power tune your Lambda functions. And then you want to set up reserved concurrency on Lambda. Now, by setting reserved concurrency on Lambda, you are ensuring that any given point, only X number of Lambda functions are fired. Now, say the reserved concurrency is 10 and the batch size is 10, which means I know basically only 10 Lambda would be fired at any given moment and each Lambda will be processing 10 unit of work. So now I know 100 records are processing in X minute, right? So basically I can control how much, how, how, basically how many Lambdas I want to fire or how many data points I want to insert into Dynamo by using reserved concurrency, right? Simply changing number will... Uh, will uh, basically uh, have more Lambda functions fired in concurrent, right? So these are some of the three methods, right? So now if you are looking for A, the cheapest and the cost effective, uh, of course, import export, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about that anymore, you know, just click few buttons and done. But if you need transformation, uh, I think the Lambda option is much better because uh, it's much more cheaper, right? And you could develop uh, or you could write your transformation logic in the Lambda function and then you can control the concurrency, etc. cetera. Uh, Glue is also a great option. Um, again, um, uh, if, you're, if you need transformation join, then Glue comes into place, right? If your data doesn't need join and simply needs transformation, I think Lambda is a pretty good choice. Again, you will save money on that. So if I had to summarize this, A, if you just want to move in data and you don't have any transformation as it is, use import export feature. If you have some sort of transformation to be done, then use Lambda and SQS to essentially, uh, you know, put data into DynamoDB. And if you require to join the data, if you want to join, uh, you know, multiple, um, you know, data frames or source and then ingest into Dynamo, then Glue is a good choice. 
So as I said, I just wanted to make this video and hope, hopefully this helps anybody who's trying to look for ways on how he or she can move in data into DynamoDB. Um, now, again, you can also develop streaming pipelines. Of course, you could do that. You can publish data into Kinesis. Um, then basically uh, from there, you could add a Lambda on the Kinesis, right? And then basically insert into um, dynamo but again if it's a one-time load which means if it's a historical load you're moving a large chunk of data i think this is a pretty good choice either go with the basic import export or go with the lambda or glue basically um again i hope this video helps and the reason i made i'm making is um uh in my company we carried out a big migration project where we migrated about um i guess lot of tables we have like 24 plus tables in dynamo db so we migrated all the data from on premises into dynamo db so these are like two years worth of historical data and any moving data forwards will be basically you know on the new new, new database right so for this migration we i mean i we leveraged couple of stuff for where we needed to join stuff we use glue uh, and then where we had light transformation, SQS Lambda uh, uh, basically was a pretty good choice. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what option do you think is better and why in the comment section below. And if you have any more questions that you want to know, simply let me know in the comments and I'm happy to chat, talk, debate and talk more about that. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys in the next video.